right, so I'm here today with Shelly Runyon, president of Titus Electrical and Titus Systems. Do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I've been in the construction industry now for 35 years, which is a little, I keep adding years to it, it's like, wow, that's a whole lot of time. Yeah. But um, yeah, we do commercial electrical fiber. Uh, we build high rises, hotels, universities, hospitals. We do data rings around the state and do tollways, um, anything commercial. We do a lot of multifamily. We do a lot of high rises. We do multifamily, multi-use. So you're looking at condos with retail on the bottom. We do hotels. We've got a couple of those going on right now. So wow. got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, yeah. <laughs> uh, how, what got you into construction? It wasn't a plan. I was <laughs> in college getting a degree in international business management. I started dating a guy who was an electrician. We ended up living together. Um, he had a job he could do. I had an American Express card and <laughs> we ended up doing a job and then we ended up doing more jobs. And the next okay. thing you know, I'm dropping out of college because my pager is going off. This is back in the old days <laughs> and um, we're working full time and things progress fairly naturally. You know, there were struggles and stuff, but right. Ended up doing that. So he became my husband. He then became my ex-husband and ex-business partner down the line. Okay. So I've had the company to myself for, since 2012. Okay. Well, yeah, since 2012. I bought him out. I realized how much I love the business and he had other things he was interested in. So it worked out well for both of us. Awesome. Have you found any differences being woman-owned now and it's, uh, being in a partnership? I was always heavily involved in the company. So it's just a change of who's who owns it now. But what's funny is, you know, since we had done it so long together, a lot of people don't realize he's gone. And they're just like, <laughs> nope, it's only because I'm not one of these. Hey, look at me. I'm out here. I'm back in the back getting the work done. Right. <laughs> um, is there a person or a group that's been a big inspiration or support in your career? I have amazing people I work with. They That's have cool. been so supportive through the transition and with the normal management. Um, I've got teams in accounting and in construction and pre-construction and estimating, you know, from purchasing, all of my people are amazing and the folks in the field. So I couldn't do any of what I do without them and without their support and without their guidance and feedback. Mm -hmm. they, I count on them to be honest with me and tell me, hey, um, this is going on, excuse me, something, ah, my alarm just went off for you, <laughs> um, that this is going on or we've got this problem. We're very collaborative. Mm -hmm. We like to problem solve together because between all of us, we see things a little differently and we have a better understanding, some of us, of the beginning process versus the end versus those who are in the middle of it and what we're missing. Okay. So we're always asking for feedback. Awesome. Have you taking any construction classes for this business outside of your international college that you were doing? No, I, it's just, um, it's been an education by fire. So, you know, I think <laughs> that that's the best way. <laughs> yes, that doesn't mean I don't read up on things that I, you know, seminars, especially with COVID and mm -hmm. figuring out all the different new rules or what's expected, things like that. But I've always done that, but I haven't gone to school for construction management or anything. How have y'all been doing that. with the COVID? Um, we're doing all right. We've been fortunate that our folks who have gotten sick have all recovered. And so, you know, so that's been really good. We're just, you know, doing like everybody else and figuring this out yeah. and seeing how things change and what needs to be done. How do we need to be safe? How do we need to be flexible? That used to, you know, we had in the beginning of this, one of our guys called me we're working on a Saturday and he's going, Somebody came to the job site with a fever. What was he thinking? And I'm like, <laughs> going, he was thinking it was last week when you yeah. used to stay man up and get out here because you told me you would be here. It's just a cold, you'll be fine. Yes. So our whole attitude has changed. Mm -hmm. And it's now, you know, somebody sneezes, they're going, it's allergies, I promise. <laughs> all, 
or they'll say, you know what, I know it's allergies, but we're in this meeting and I'm going to stay way over here. Yeah. It's all about being considerate of everybody's yeah. comfort levels of what you can and can't do. Right. And also making sure that you're not being inconsiderate of others and putting them at risk because you don't know their medical history. You don't know their right. family situation. And it's hard to tell guys, I'm sorry, you can't come in. You've got to quarantine mm -hmm. because of this, but they're going, I'm fine. And I've tested negative. I'm going, yeah, but your mother, brother, and sister have it. The chances it's of you having it or being, you know, giving it to somebody is still there. Yeah. So do you have any advice that you would give any women that just want to start out or any girls that are in college now that are trying to find a career? Find your passion, figure out what you want to do and fight like hell for it. <laughs> if you want to do something, be good at it. You're going to have to do that in any career, any industry right. and look at the different options and don't take no for an answer. You've got the opportunities out there. And these days it's much easier, mm -hmm. I believe. And I'm not out there in the job market, but I know the people I talk to, they don't think twice about female electrician or female at, um, project manager yet, but the, you have to work hard and you have to be good at what you do. Right. And yeah. That's, but that's in any career, but you can do it. Yeah. And there's so many different aspects of construction mm -hmm. now. It's not, you, you either have your tools on or you're in the office. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know if you looked at that link that I sent you um, from. Uh, last week, yeah. Yeah. But it's true because you do have, you have safety, you have HR, you have um, computer modeling, you have them, you have tools on, you have project admin, you have mm -hmm. project management, you have purchasing. You have logistics. There's so many parts to it right. that most people don't think of. Yeah. And most people that end up in this, women that end up in this in the old days, they just sort of found it through um, some kind of admin. But now there's courses out there. There's, mm -hmm. you know, Texas um, State University has a great construction management program. Oh, great. That's awesome. How do you think the construction industry might change over the next 10 years? I mean, I know we have COVID now and we don't really know when that'll end, but any other thoughts or projections? Um, automation is becoming mm -hmm. huge. The amount of data that is used from BIM, where you're you know, looking at conflicts with other contractors and laying everything out, um, the technology, the information that is sent from the field to the office, mm -hmm. the daily updates, it's just going to continue. And then now you've got robots in some parts <laughs> that are doing things. But yeah. it's, you've got, think about it, though. You've got your plans on the computer. You're doing um, coordination studies. You've got it all laid out. Why wouldn't you have a computer or a robot doing some of these things? Yeah. But also what's really come along is prefab. You know, used to, we would do little bits and pieces in-house. Mm -hmm. Now, when we did um, Seton Medical Center at UT, J.E. Dunn had all the patients' rooms prefabbed. You had wow. your plumbing, your electrical, your framing, all of it's done, and you're coming in and you're inserting these boxes into a building. I had and heard that. Allows, yeah, it's, it's fascinating mm -hmm. what they're doing and how it's coming along. And I write about hotels, the same thing with the guest rooms. They're all put together and just sort of inserted into the box. Wow. That's interesting. That, that's a new yeah. one for me. I had not heard anything about that. So it saves a lot of time and probably difficulties and confusions if you have everything prefab and just get to put it where it belongs. It does. And it also allows the job site to have less trade stacking because yeah. you've got people off site doing things and you're going from component to component and you don't have this building that you can get do all the all the guts and bits and pieces to it and then just insert the other parts. So it makes it for a much more efficient building system as well. Awesome. So do you have like a lot of issues getting paid from your subs or you know, do you find any particular area of the job more difficult than the other? Contract negotiation is always an issue. Yeah. That's how, that's where getting paid starts mm -hmm. is going through the contract or reading every single line of it and then going back and saying, I hate to do this, but we're going to have to change this because everybody says you can't change the contract. This is how it always right. is. <laughs> they always change yeah. because there's that paragraph at the bottom that says this has been mutually negotiated mm -hmm. and is the benefit of one party or the other. You can't sign that if you can't negotiate. Right. And 
but it doesn't have to be a battle. Mm -hmm. It's asking, explaining to the contractors what you're trying to accomplish. This paragraph says this, here's my issue with it. Do you have words, if you don't like mine, that we can work on it? So it is a true negotiation going back and forth. And it can be frustrating on both parts, but mm -hmm. at least at the end of the day, we all know what's in that contract. And the thing is, is you don't need the contract till you need it. Yeah, you hope, that's true. That's true. You hope you don't have to go back and look at that. And most contractors are good. It's those bad ones that over the decades you've mm -hmm. had, those are the classes I've taken is awesome. the bad contract negotiation. <laughs> and yeah. So, Oh, you know, because you always go into a part, this is a partnership with a contractor. We're going to build something fabulous. And you want to work from day one together to that goal where it's profitable for everybody. The customer gets an amazing in piece and we all walk away and go, good job. <laughs> That's what we want, but you've got to lay the foundation along the way. Yeah. So starting with a good contract and then doing what you're supposed to, following the lean logs making sure and understanding that those are a tool. Yeah, you know, it's not necessarily a stick. It's just what we have to do. Right. And the fabulous thing about that is everybody's doing it now. Used to, it was, oh, you can't, don't send a notice. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get paid or you're going to start a fight. Now with everybody along the chain doing it, it actually helps. Right. Because it not only helps the subcontractor and the supply houses, it actually helps the contractor in a lot of ways with the owner. Hey, I'm sorry. I don't have any control of this. This is Texas law. This is what we're doing. And they're, they're, they're wanting to get paid. So can you pay me please so I can pay them? Absolutely. So it's a tool that I think helps everybody along the way. And plus we're following the law. It's something that once you start doing it and you learn the words right, and how to explain it. And sometimes it takes two or three different times. And sometimes it's actually co copying and pasting a link to, to level set and going, here, we're not the only ones doing this. So I've actually <laughs> done that. Perfect. Using y'all as a, hey, this is it. Especially if you're doing, dealing with out-of-state contractors, mm -hmm. you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You've got, you know, this is Texas laws. So you're, you're negotiating a contract and going, no, I can't be held by New Jersey construction laws because I don't mm -hmm. know them. And we're doing work here in Texas. Right. But, you know, we're going, oops, okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, do that. Yeah. But it's. Is that something you watch for any contracts too, is the venue? Oh, absolutely. Good. I <laughs> and even here doing work in Texas, you've got contractors out of Houston, out of Dallas, out of San Antonio. And I found the best way to, um, to word it is in the county the work was done. In. Mm -hmm. And because that's, I'm not saying log, um, Austin, I'm not saying Round Rock, I'm mm -hmm. not, it's where the, where the project's located. That way it's more, it's more fair, or at mm -hmm. least it seems that way. Instead, I know it's my my neighborhood, not yours. Right. Let's, right. Just, let's just go where the project is. Fortunately, right. all of our work's in this area. Yeah. And I think judges appreciate that too, that you're not trying to, you know, take one over on somebody. Definitely. I mean, yeah. I've always done where the project was as well. So in your position, what's a, like a daily, what's your day look like? My day is it's sort of interesting because I actually had to go, because on your questions that was, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And I went and asked my vice president to tell me what I do. <laughs> because I, I do a little bit of everything. And so I, because a little bit of everything, but, and then he's like, well, no, you're, and I, and he's going, yeah, you're involved in all the different aspects. He said, when I'm explaining to somebody what you do, I look at you as a pilot. You've got you're keeping things in line, you are, but you're heavily involved, you're touching everything without getting in our way. Because I'm I'm involved in the accounting department and the mm -hmm. HR department and pre-construction, deciding on what jobs we're going to do. Right. Um, on the project management team, I'm in those meetings. But I look at my job as a support system, not a roadblock. So being involved in those things, I can do a couple of things. One, I'm there to help guide what we're doing, mm -hmm. but also I'm there to help problem solve. And if I'm not right in the middle of it, like your project managers or your estimators or account, I've got a different perspective. And mm -hmm. since I'm involved with the other departments as well, mm -hmm. I can help keep some things from clashing. Right. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So, and I'm 
I like being involved and in knowing what's going on. I'm not really good at reports. I'd rather just sit back and listen <laughs> and see what's going on and how I can help. Because at the end of the day, my job is to help everybody that works with me. Mm -hmm. Because if I can make their job better, then life is better. We spend more time at work than we do at home. And if, really? if work is pretty good, life is really good. I love your viewpoint of it. <laughs> a lot of places are, you know, they just, their employees are numbers, you know, so to actually appreciate what they're doing, you know, trusting what they're doing, and just kind of being that outside voice and maybe decision maker or something like that. That's, I'm sure they'd really appreciate that. I really appreciate them and the value that they bring. They are amazing and they've got so much talent mm -hmm. that I couldn't do what I do without them. And when you sur surround yourself by fabulous people, when you let them do their job, you give them support, you don't hang them out there, yeah. uh, good.